I Ching by Confucius. Audiobook 13x27. It will be advantageous, also, to see the great man. 1. The first six, divided, shows its subject, now, advancing, now, receding. It would be advantageous for him to have a firm correctness so far brave soldier. 2. The second nine, undivided, shows the representative of sun beneath a couch, and employing diviners and exorcists in a way bordering on confusion. There will be good fortune and no error. 3. The third nine, undivided, shows its subject penetrating, only, by violent and repeat efforts. There will be occasion for regret. 4. The fourth six, divided, shows all occasion for repentance, in its subject, passe dawi. He take us game for its tree folges in his shunting. 5. The fifth nine, undivided, shows that with firm correctness there will be good fortune, to its subject. All occasion for repentance will disappear, and all his movements will be advantageous. There may have ebono, good, beginning, but there will be a, good, end. Three days before making any changes, let him give notice of them, and three days after, let him reconsider them. There will, thus, be good fortune. 6. The sixth nine, undivided, shows the representative of penetration beneath a couch, and having lost the axe with which he executed his decisions. However firm and correct the may, truto, be there will bevel. Footnotes LVII with sun as the fifth of the Fushi trigrams we have become familiar. It symbolizes both wind and wood, and has the attributes of flexibility, nearly allied to docility, and penetration. In this hexagram we are tothing a fit ash representing wind with its penetrating power, finding its way into every corner and cranny. Confucius once said, Analects 12. 19. The relation between superiors and inferiors is like that between the wind and the grass. The grass must bend when the wind blows upon it. In accordance with this, the subject of the hexagram must be understood as the influence and orders of government designed to remedy what is wrong in the people. The daily lecture says that the upper trigram denotes the orders issuing from the ruler, and the lower the obedience rendered to them by the people, but this view is hardly borne out by the text. But how is it that the figure represents merely some little attainment? This is generally explained by taking the first line of the trigram as indicating what the subject of it can do. But over the weak first line are two strong lines, so that its subject can accomplish but little. The Kangxi editors, rejecting this view, contend that, the idea of the whole figure being penetration, line 1, the symbol of weakness and what is bad, will not be able to offer much resistance to the subjects of the other lines which will enter and dispel its influence. They illustrate this from processes of nature, education, and politics, the effect they say is described as small, because the process is not to revolutionize or renew, but only to correct and improve. Such as it is, however, it requires the operation of the strong and virtuous, the great man. Even all this criticism is not entirely satisfactory. Line 1 is weak, where it should be strong. The movements of its subject are expressive of perplexity. He wants vigor and decision. Line 2 is strong, and in the right place and has a good auspice. Things are placed or hidden beneath a couch or bed, and the subject of the line appears as searching for them. He calls in divination to assist his judgment, and exorcists to expel for him what is bad. The work is great and difficult, so that he appears almost distracted by it, but the issue is good. For this successful explanation of the line, I am indebted to the Kangxi editors. The writer of the text believed of course in divination and exorcism, which was his misfortune arithoth and his falter folly. 
Line 3 is in the right place for a strong line. But its position at the top of the lower trigram is supposed to indicate the restlessness, and here the vehemence, of its subject. And 6 is no proper correlate. All the striving is ineffective, and theorize occasion for regret. Line 4 is weak, as is its correlate in 1. But 4 is a proper place for a weak line, and it rests under the shadow of the strong and central 5. Hence the omens of evil are counteracted, and a good auspice is obtained. The game caught in hunting was divided into three portions. The first for use in sacrifices, the second for the entertainment of visitors, and the third for the kitchen generally. A hunt which yielded enough for all these purposes was deemed very successful. On line 5 KHNGs says, It is the seat of honor, and the place for the Lord of Sun, from whom there issue all charges and commands. It is central and correct, we must find in its subject the qualities denoted by Sun in their greatest excellence. But those qualities are docility in accordance with what is right, and the advantage of firm correctness is insisted on. With this all will be right. With the concluding sentence compareth the conclusion oft one of a exagram 18. The evil that paragraph 6 concludes with would arise from the quality of sun being carried to excess. I have followed the Kangxi editors in adopting a Kane Jav 1 a character in their received text. Lay Ayin. The Tui hexagram Tui intimates that, under its conditions, there will be progress and attainment. But, it will be advantageous to firm and correct. 1. The first nine, undivided, shows the pleasure of, inward, harmony. There will be good fortune. 2. The second nine, undivided, shows the pleasure arising from, inward, sincerity. There will be good fortune. Occasion for repentance will disappear. 3. The third six, divided, shows its subject bringing round himself whatever can of a pleasure. There will be evil. 4. The fourth nine, undivided, shows its subject deliberating about what to seek his pleasure in, and not at rest. He borders on what would be injurious, but there will be cause for hoy. 5. The fifth nine, undivided, shows its subject trusting in one who would injure him. The situation is perilous. 6. The topmost six, divided, shows the pleasure of its subject in leading and attracting others. Footnotes lay i.e. the trigram to e symbolizes water as collected in a marsh or lake, and its attribute or virtues is pleasure or complacent satisfaction. It is a matter of some difficulty to determine in one's mind how this attribute came to be connected with the trigram. The Kangxi editors say. When the airs of spring begin to blow, from the collections of water on the earth the moistening vapors rise up, and descend again, so, when the breath of health is vigorous in a man's person, the hue of it is displayed in his complexion. Akin to this is the significance of the hexagram Tui representing a marsh, as denoting pleasure. Although the yin lines give it its special character they owe their power and effect to the yang, so when the qualities of mildness and harmony prevail in a man, without true heartedness and integrity to control and direct them, they will fail to be correct, and may degenerate into what is evil. Hence it is said that it will be advantageous to be firm and correct. The feeling then of pleasure is the subject of this hexagram. The above quotation sufficiently explains the concluding characters of this one, but where is the intimation in 2e of progress and attainments? It is supposed to be in the one weak line surmounting each trigram and supported by the two strong lines. Fancy seasoned that mildness and benignity energized be a double portion of strength. Line 1, strong in the place of strength, with no proper correlate above, is thus confined to itself. But its subject is sufficient for himself. There will be good fortune. Line 2, by the rule of place, should be weak, but it is strong. Without any proper correlate, 
and contiguous to the week three, the subject of it might be injuriously affected, and there would be cause for repentance. But the sincerity natural in his central position counteracts all these. The view of the third paragraph that appears in the translation is derived from the Kangxi editors. The evil threatened in it would be consequence of the excessive devotion of its subject to pleasure. The bordering on what is injurious in paragraph 4 has reference to the contiguity of line 4 to the week 3. That might have an injurious effect, but the subject of 4 reflects and deliberates before he will yield to the seduction of pleasure and there is cause for joy. The danger to the subject of line 5 is from the week 6 above, in whom he is represented as trusting. Possibly his own strength and sincerity of mind may be perverted into instruments of evil, but possibly, they may operate beneficially. The symbolism of paragraph 6 is akin to that of 3, though no positive auspice is expressed. The subject of line 3 attracts others round itself for the sake of pleasure, the subject of this leads them to follow himself in quest of it. Lex. The one hexagram one intimates that, under its conditions, there will be progress and success. The king goes to his ancestral temple, and it will be advantageous to cross the great stream. It will be advantageous to be firm and correct. 1. The first six, divided, shows its subject engaged in rescuing, from the impending evil, and having, the assistance of, a strong horse. There will be good fortune. 2. The second nine, undivided, shows its subject, amid the dispersion, hurrying to his contrivance, for security. All occasion for repentance will disappear. 3. The third six, divided, shows its subject discarding any regard to his own person. There will be no occasion for repentance. 4. The fourth six, divided, shows its subject scattering the, different, parties, in the state, which leads to great good fortune. From the dispersion, he collects again good men standing out, a crowd, like a mound, which is what ordinary mean would not have a thought of. 5. The fifth nine, undivided, shows its subject amidst the dispersion issuing his great announcements as the perspiration, flows from his body. He scatters abroad, also, the accumulations in the royal granaries. There will be no error. 6. The topmost nine undivided, shows its subject disposing goff, what may be called, its bloody wounds, and going and separating himself from its anxious fears. There will be no error. Footnotes Lix 1, the name of this hexagram, denotes a state of dissipation or dispersion. It is descriptive primarily of men's minds alienated from what is right and good. This alienation is sure to go on to disorder in the commonwealth, and an attempt is made to show how it should be dealt with Andre Medid. The figure is made up of one of the trigrams for water and over it that for wind. Wind moving over water seems to disperse it, and awakes naturally in the beholder the idea of dissipation. The intimation of progress and success is supposed to be given by the strong lines occupying the central places. The king goes to the ancestral temple, there to meet with the spirits of his ancestors. His filial piety moves them by the sincerity of its manifestation. Those spirits come and are present. Let filial piety in our language, let sincere religion rule in men's minds, and there will be no alienation in them from what is right and good or from one another. And if the state of the country demand a great or hazardous enterprise, let it be undertaken. But whatever is done, must be done with due attention to what is right, firm lined correctly. Line 1, at the commencement of the hexagram, tells us that the evil has not yet made great progress, and that dealing with it will be easy. But the subject of the line is weak, and in an odd place. He cannot cope with the evil himself. He must have help and he finds that in a strong horse, which description is understood to be symbolical of the subject of the strong-skinned line. 
Line 2 is strong, but in an even place. That place is, indeed, the central, but the attribute of the lower trigram con is peril. These conditions indicate evil, and action will be dangerous, but the subject of two looks to one below him, and takes shelter in union with its subject. Since the commentary of KHNGs, this has been the interpretation oft line. Line 3 is weak, and in an odd place. A regard for himself that would unfit its subject for contributing any service to the work of the hexagram might be feared, but he discards that regard, and will do nothing to be repented of. There is a change of style in the Chinese text at this point. As Wang Shen's, Yuan Dynasty, says. Here and henceforth the scattering is of what should be scattered, that what should not be scattered may be collected. Line 4, though weak, is in its correct place, and adjoins the strong 5, which is in the ruler's seat. The subject of 4, therefore, will fitly represent the minister, to whom it belongs to do a great part in remedying the evil of dispersion. And this he does. He brings dissentient partisanship to an end, and not satisfied with that, he collects multitudes of those who had been divided into a great body so that they stand out conspicuous like a hill. Line 5 gives us the action of the ruler himself, by his proclamations, and by his benevolence. Kushi and other critics enlarge on the symbolism of the perspiration, which they think much to the point. P. Regis avoids it, translating Isle, Magnus Legis Dissipans, Face it ut penetrant, dur, dot. Canon McClatchy has an ingenious and original, so far as my Chinese reading goes, note upon it. As sweat cures fevers, so do proclamations cure rebellions. But off these translators miss the meaning oft other instancy of Thicking's work. Line 6 is occupied by a strong line, which has a proper correlate in 3, but 3 is at the top of the trigram of peril. The subject of 6 hurries away from association with the subject of it, but does so in the spirit of the hexagram, so that there is no error or blamey tacking to him. LX. The KIEH hexagram key intimates that, under its conditions, there will be progress and attainment. But, if the regulations, which it prescribes, be severe and difficult, they cannot be permanent. 1. The first nine, undivided, shows its subject not quitting the courtyard outside his door. There will be no error. 2. The second nine, undivided, shows its subject not quitting the courtyard inside his gate. There will be vol. 3. The third six, divided, shows its subject with no appearance of observing the, proper, regulations, in which case we shall see him lamenting. But there will be Nunato blame, but himself. 4. The fourth six, divided, shows its subject quietly and naturally, attentive toll, regulations. There will be progress and success. 5. The fifth nine, undivided, shows its subject sweetly and acceptably enacting his regulations. There will be good fortune. The onward progress with them will afford ground for admiration. 6. The topmost six, divided, shows its subject enacting regulations severe and difficult. Even with firmness and correctness there will be evil. But though there will be cause for repentance it will, be and by, disappear. Footnotes LX The primary application of the character key was to denote the joints of the bamboo, it is used also for the joints of the human frame, and for the solar and other terms of the year. Whatever makes regular division may be denominated a key, there enter into it the ideas of regulating and restraining, and the subject of this hexagram is the regulations of government enacted for the guidance and control of the people. How the constituent trigrams are supposed to suggest or indicate this meaning will be seen in Appendix II. 
Ku Shi anticipates that symbolism in trying to account for the statement that the figure gives the promise of success and attainment, but the ground of this is generally made out by referring to the equal division of the undivided and divided lines and are having in 2 and 5, the central places, two undivided lines. An important point concerning regulations is brought out in the conclusion of this one, that they must be adapted to circumstances, and no made too strict and severe. Line 1 is strong, and in its correct place. Its subject therefore would not be wanting in power to make his way. But Hayes supposed to have backed in check by the strong 2, and the correlate 4 is the first line in the trigram of peril. The course of wisdom therefore is to keep still. The character here rendered door is that belonging to the inner apartments, leading from the hall into which entrance is found by the outer gate, mentioned under line 2. The courtyard outside the door and that inside the gate is one and the same. The daily lecture says that the paragraph tells an officer not to take office rashly, but to exercise a cautious judgment in his measures. Line 2 is strong, in the wrong place, nor has it a proper correlate. Its subject keeps still, when he ought to be a panned doing. There will be evil. Line 3 should be strong, but it is weak. It is neither central nor correct. It has no proper correlate, and it is the topmost line in the trigram of complacent satisfaction. Its subject will not receive the yoke of regulations, and he will find out his mistake, when it is too late. Line 4 is weak, as it ought to be, and its subject has respect to the authority of the strong ruler in 5. Hence its good symbolism and auspice. Line 5 is strong, and in its correct place. Its subject regulates himself, having no correlate, but he is lord of the hexagram and his influence I severely where beneficially felt. Line 6 is weak, in its proper place. The subject of the topmost line must be supposed to possess an exaggerated desire for enacting regulations. They will be too severe, and the effect will be evil. But as Confucius, Analex 3. 3, says, that is not so great a fault as to be easy and remiss. It may be remedied, and cow sefer repentance will disappear. LXI. The Kung Fu hexagram Kung Fu, moves even, pigs and fish, and leads to good fortune. There will be advantage in crossing the great stream. There will be advantage in being firm and correct. I. The first nine, undivided, shows its subject resting, in himself. There will be good fortune. If he suffed on yother he would not find rest. 2. The second nine, undivided, shows its subject, like, the crane crying out in her head and retirement and Harry Ganesh responding to her. Ida Sasa Fitwar said, I have a cup of good spirits, and the response were, I will partake of it with you. 3. The third six, divided, shows its subject having met with his mate. Now he beats his drum and no leaves off. No he weeps and no sings. 4. The fourth six, divided, shows its subject, like, the moon nearly full, and, like, a horse, in a chariot, whose fellow disappears. There will be no error. 5. The fifth nine, undivided, shows its subject perfectly sincere, and linking, others, to Hyman closest union. There will be no error. 6. The topmost nine, undivided, shows its subject enchanticlear, trying to, mount to heaven. Even with ephraim correctness there will be evil. Footnotes LXI Kung Fu, the name of this hexagram, may be represented in English by inmost sincerity. It denotes the highest quality of man, and gives its possessor power so that he prevails with spiritual beings, with other men, and with the lower creatures. It is the subject of the doctrine of the mean from the twenty-first chapter onwards, where Remusat rendered it by law perfection, law perfection morale, 
and Interceta and his coadjutors by Verisola doc perfectio. The lineal figure has suggested to the Chinese commentators, from the author of the first appendix, two ideas in it which deserve to be pointed out. There are two divided lines in the center and two undivided below them and above them. The divided lines in the center are held to represent the heart or mind free from all preoccupation, without any consciousness of self, and the undivided lines, on each side of it, in the center of the constituent trigrams are held to denote the solidity of the virtua phone so free from selfishness. There is no unreality in it not a single flaw. The daily lecture at the conclusion of its paraphrase of the Thuan refers to the history of the ancient Shun, and the wonderful achievements of his virtue. The authors give no instance of the affecting, of pigs and fishes by sincerity, and say that these names are symbolical of men, the rudest and most unsusceptible of being acted on. The text says that the man thus gifted with sincerity will succeed in the most difficult enterprises. Remarkable is the concluding sentence that he must be firm and correct. Here, as elsewhere throughout the Yi, there comes out the practical character which has distinguished the Chinese people and their best teaching all along of history. The translation of paragraph 1 is according to the view approved by the Kangxi editors. The ordinary view makes the other to whom the subject of line 1 looks or might look to be the subject of 4, but they contend that, excepting in the case of 3 and 6, the force of correlation should be discarded from the study of this hexagram, for the virtue of sincerity is all centered in itself, thence a derived and thereby powerful. For paragraph 2, see Appendix 3, Section I, 42. It is in rhyme, and I have there rendered it in rhyme. The young ones of the crane are represented by line 1. In the third and fourth sentences we have the symbolism of two men brought together by their sympathy in virtue. The subject of the paragraph is the effect of sincerity. The mate of line 3 is 6. The principle of correlation comes in. Sincerity, not left to itself, is influenced from without and dense kamethi changes and uncertainty in thestate and mudsoft subjectoft line. Line 4 is weak, and in its correct place. The subject of it has discarded the correlate in 1, and hastens on to the confidence of the ruler in 5, being symbolized as the moon nearly full. The other symbol of the horse whose fellow has disappeared has reference to the discarding of the subject of one. Anciently chariots and carriages were drawn by four horses, two outsides and two insides. Lines one and four were a pair of these, but one disappears from Thetum, A and D for Gosen and joins five. Line five is strong and central, in the ruler's place. Its subject must be the sage on the throne whose sincerity will go forth hand bind Alan union with himself. Line 6 should be divided, but is undivided, and coming after 5, what can the subject of it do? His efforts will be ineffectual, and injurious to himself. He is symbolized by a cock literally, the plumaged voice. Buta cockies not fit to fly high, and in attempting todo sowl own lie suffer hurt. LXII the Shio KWO hexagram Shio Quo indicates that, in the circumstances which it implies, there will be progress and attainment. But it will be advantageous to be firm and correct. What the name denotes, may be done in small affairs, but not in great affairs. It is like, the notes that come down from a bird on the wing, to descend is better than to ascend. There will, in Thy's way, be great good fortune. 1. The first six, divided, suggests, the idea of, a bird flying, and ascending, till theusu isival. 2. The second six, divided, shows its subject passing by his grandfather, and meeting with his grandmother, not attempting anything against his ruler, but meeting Himash's minister. There will be no error. 3. The third nine, undivided, shows its subject taking no extraordinary precautions against danger, 
and some in consequence finding opportunity to assail and injure him. There will be vil. 4. The fourth nine, undivided, shows its subject falling into no error, but meeting, the exigency of his situation, without exceeding, in his natural course. If he go forward, there will be peril, and he must be cautious. There is new occasion to abusing formness perpetually. 5. The fifth six, divided, suggests the idea, of dense clouds, but no rain, coming from our borders in the west. It also, shows, the prince shooting his arrow and taking the bird in a cave. 6. The sixth six, divided, shows its subject not meeting, the exigency of his situation, and exceeding, his proper course. It suggests the idea of, a bird flying far aloft. There will be evil. The case is what is called one of calamity and self-produced injury. Footnotes LXII The name Shiokuo is explained both by reference to the lines of the hexagram, and to the meaning of the characters. The explanation from the lines appears immediately on comparing them with those of Ta Kuo, the 28th hexagram. There the first and sixth lines are divided, and between are four undivided lines, here the third and fourth lines are undivided, and outside each of them are two divided lines. The undivided or yang lines are great, the divided or yin lines are called small. In Shio Kuo the divided or small lines predominate. But this peculiar structure of the figure could be of no interest to the student, if it were not for the meaning of the name, which is small excesses or exceeding in what is small. The author, accepted by us as King W.N., had in his mind our distinction of essentials and non-essentials. Is it ever good to deviate from what is recognized as the established course of procedure? The reply is never in the matter of right but in what is conventional and ceremonial and what is non-essential the deviation may be made, and will be productive of good. The form may be given up, but not the substance. But the thing must be done very carefully. Humbly and reverently, and in small matters. The symbolism of the bird is rather obscure. The whole of it is intended to teach humility. It is better for the bird to descend, keeping near to where it can perch and rest, than to hold on ascending into the homeless regions off the air. Line 1 is weak, in an odd place, and possessed by the idea of exceeding, which belongs to the hexagram. Its correlate is the strong 4, belonging to the trigram KN, the attribute of which is movement. There is nothing to repress the tendency of phi, rather it is stimulated, and hence the symbolism. Line 2 is weak, but in its proper place, and in the center. Its correlate is 5, which is also a weak line. The lines 3 and 4 between them are both strong, and are supposed to represent the father and grandfather of the subject of 2, but he or she goes past them, and meets with the grandmother in 5. Again, 5 is the ruler's seat. The subject OF2 moves on to him, but Nata's an enemy, but humbly and loyally, as his minister according to the attributes of a weak line in the central place. It must be allowed that this view of the symbolism and its interpretation is obscure and strained. The subject of line 3 is too confident in his own strength, and too defiant of the weak and small enemies that seek his hurt. Line 4 is also strong, but the exercise of his strength by its subject is tempered by the position in an even place. He is warned, however, to continue quiet and restrain himself. Line 5, though in the ruler's seat, is weak, and incapable of doing anything great. Its subject is called king or duke because of the ruler's seat and the one whom in the concluding sentence he is said to capture is supposed to beta subject OF2. The first part of the symbolism is the same as that of the th one under hexagram 9, QV. I said there that it probably gave a testimony of the merit of the house of Cao, as deserving the throne rather than the kings of Shang. That was because the th one contained the sentiments of WN, 
while he was yet only Lord of Cao. But the symbolism here was Thwarkoth the Duke of Cao, after his brother King Wu had obtained the throne. How did the symbolism then occur to him? May we not conclude that at least the Xiang of this hexagram was written during the troubled period of Fi's regency after the accession of Hu's son, King Khng? The Kangxi editors find in the concluding symbolism an incentive to humility. The duke, leaving bird sun thuing is content taus hisaris against those in a cave. Line 6 is weak, and is at the top of the trigram of movement. He is possessed by the idea of the hexagram in an extreme degree and is incapable of keeping himself under restraint. Lz8. The key hexagram key intimates progress and success in small matters. There will be advantage in being firm and correct. There has been good fortune in the beginning, there may be disorder in themed. 1. The first nine, undivided, shows its subject as a driver, who drags back his wheel, or as a fox, which has with his tail. There will be no error. 2. The second six, divided, shows its subject as, a wife who has lost her, carriage, screen. There is no occasion to go in pursuit of it. In seven days she will find it. 3. The third nine, undivided, suggests the case of, Kaoung, who attacked the demon region, but was three years in subduing it. Small men should not be employed, in such enterprises. 4. The fourth six, divided, shows its subject with rags provided against any leak in his boat, and in his guard all day long. 5. The fifth nine, undivided, shows its subject, as, the neighbor in the east who slaughters an ox, for his sacrifice, but this is not equal to the, small, spring sacrifice of the neighbor in thuist who sincerity receives thebelzing. 6. The topmost six, divided, shows its subject with, even, his head immersed. The position is perilous. Footnotes LZ8 The character called Key is used as a symbol of being passed or completed. Denotes primarily crossing a stream, and has the secondary meaning of helping and completing. The two characters, combined, will express the successful accomplishment of whatever the writer has in his mind. In dealing with this lineal figure, King W.N. was thinking of the condition of the kingdom, at length at rest and quiet. The vessel of the state has been brought safely across the great and dangerous stream. The distresses of the kingdom have been relieved, and its disorders have been repressed. Does anything remain to be done still? Yes, in small things. The new government has to be consolidated. Its ruler must, without noise or clamor, go on to perfect what has been wrought, with firmness and correctness, and ever keeping in mind the instability of all human affairs. That every line of the hexagram is in its correct place, and has its proper correlate is also supposed to harmonize with intimation of progress and success. Audiobook generated by, Read with the Ears.